In this example, we have a um, RLC circuit that follows this arrangement, and we are looking for the equations that describe the behavior of this system as a function of the currents and the input voltage that we have here as V of T. We can split the circuit into two branches and create two loops for currents and start to work from there. We can then relate the current and the voltage using Kirchhoff's law for each of the loops that we are going to create. Let's start with this loop here. We can say that in this loop, there is a current I1. And in the second loop, we have a current I2. We can now apply Kirchhoff's law to each of these loops. We start with the first one. We know that the sum of all voltage drops across this circuit equals the input voltage to the system, or the sum of all voltages across this loop equals to zero. It's the same statement. And same goes for the second loop. The sum of all voltages in this closed circuit must be zero. Starting with the first loop, we know again that the sum of the voltage drop across L and across R, across the resistor and the inductor, equals the input voltage V. We can then write that V of T equals to the sum of voltage drops. Looking at the resistor, the voltage drop as the current passes through it is simply R times the current itself, I1. The current then goes through the inductor, and we know that the relation there in the voltage across the inductor is VL equals to L, the inductance, times the time derivative of the current. But if you note here, we have two currents going through that inductor. One is I1, that we are taking as our reference, and hence is positive, and we have I2 going upwards. Because our reference is I1, we can say that I2 is negative, and the net current that passes through the, the inductor is I1 minus I2. Again, because our positive reference is the current we are currently following, that is I1. Thus, the voltage drop across the inductor is L times the derivative of the current through the inductor, that is I1 minus I2. Because again, we defined our current looping in that direction. If you now look at the second branch here, the second loop, we can derive a similar expression. Starting with this resistor here, the voltage drop across the resistor is R times the current I2. We now go to the capacitor. The voltage across the capacitor is 1 over C integral of the current I2 dt, integral of I2 dt. And the last element that we have in the circuit is the same inductor. But note that now our reference is I2. Our sense of positive currents is clockwise. That's what we are following now. So I2 is now positive. If for this loop I2 is positive, you see that I1 is going in the opposite direction through the inductor. I2 goes up. I1 goes down. I2 is now negative. So the voltage drop across the inductor in the second, in the second loop now is L times the derivative of I2 minus I1. I1. And this equals to zero.